Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Joseph Dobrian, and tonight we are going to be discussing the issue of taxation, both from uh, libertarian and non-libertarian perspectives. Uh, on my left to uh, help with this discussion is uh, Adam Yomtov, the New York State Volunteer Director for Americas for Fair Taxation, as well as for the National Retail Sales Tax Alliance. And on my right, uh, strictly geographically speaking, is Brian Jones, consulting actuary and attorney. And we are going to be discussing the issue of sales taxes versus income taxes versus other types of taxes versus what I would support, no taxes at all. But let's uh, start with you, Mr. Yomtov. You are um, part of an organization that claims to favor fair taxation and an organization that favors a national retail sales tax. So am I to construe from that that you consider a national retail sales tax the uh, fairest form of taxation available? Yes. And for what reason? Uh, let me just let me just state so there's some clarity there. I'm the New York State Volunteer Director for Americans for Fair Taxation and the National Retail Sales Tax Alliance. Right. Uh, the fair tax is the way we are marketing our national retail sales tax. So it's called the fair tax, which is a progressive, revenue-neutral national retail sales tax. Okay. And uh, Mr. Jones, what's your opinion of a national retail sales tax? Does the uh, concept um, thrill you or offend you or some point in between? The concept certainly doesn't thrill me. I'm <clears throat> a defender of the income tax, at least in concept. I'm not a defender of the complexity of it. And uh, as you've probably heard me on previous shows, uh, that's one of, one of my strong opinions, that the complexity could b disappear. But nevertheless, the income tax is almost by definition the fair and progressive way to, uh, to raise revenue, and I do defend the concept. Uh, I would not want to see it replaced. You know, with a, I wonder how you tax. managed to get fair and progressive in the same sentence, but uh, maybe you can tell me uh, what's wrong with a uh, national sales tax as opposed to a... Uh, an income tax. I hate them both, but apparently well, you like one or the other. Well, what, what's wrong with the sales tax is that it doesn't, doesn't generally have the element of progression. There are some progressive features in, in that you can tax luxury items at a much higher rate. <clears throat> but if you're going to, excuse me, if, you, if you're going to raise revenue purely by a sales tax, you get away from the concept that the people who can afford it are the ones who are paying. Okay, with, with the quibble about luxuries. Uh, Mr. Yomhoff, did I understand you to say that your proposed national sa retail sales tax is a progressive tax? Correct. And uh, if it is, explain to us how that works. Well, I'll explain it to you. It's very simple, which is one of the keystones of, of what we are pushing for, which is simplicity and fairness. How is it progressive? In theory, a sales tax is regressive. The reality of it, and that's why I just wanted to preface the fair tax, is that we recognize that in the reality and what our uh, bill, House Resolution 25 and S25, takes into consideration is that, and therefore what we do is, up until the poverty level, we are going to rebate all of that federal tax. So for hypothetical purposes here, say the poverty level is determined to be $20,000 and the national retail sales tax is a percent, uh, 10 percent. 10 percent of 20,000 is? 2,000. Wow. Uh, anybody could do it. It's fantastic. You don't need a lawyer. You don't need an accountant. Simplicity. The first 2,000, the first 20,000 dollars that you spend would be rebated. 2,000 dollars would be rebated, therefore making our sales tax, the fair tax, a progressive tax. I have some stats here. The fair tax is progressive. The net tax rate for the poor at the poverty level, as just explained, would be 0%. For the middle class, it would be twice the poverty line, which is 11.5%, and four times the poverty line would be 17.2%. And the richer you are, the richer you are, the more you spend. Okay, now, Mr. So that's where, the, that's where the progressivity comes into play. Mr. Jones, that would seem to, to some extent, meet your objection to, uh, to this not being a progressive tax. Another thing I'd like to point out is that an awful lot of European countries have a sales tax or what they call a value-added tax, 
and uh, they, they seem but, to like <coughs> it. Um, the, what, what do you have to say? There, there is a very significant difference between a retail sales tax and a, and a VAT tax. The VAT tax is much more difficult to, uh, to evade, which is the, the good thing to be said for it. But the difficulty with it is, again, complexity, because it's levied at all stages of, of, of production. You don't wait until the very end. And one thing to point out is the fair tax is not a VAT, as stated. Uh, a VAT is completely different than a sales tax. Okay, fine. But I would like to bring up the issue of so-called progressivism. Uh, I don't understand why a taxation system, if we've got to have one at all, should be progressive. I think it should probably be as low and as flat as possible for everybody. Why do you want to redistribute the wealth? That's not the government's function, is it, or should it be? I'm not here to discuss where the money is actually spent. I'm here to talk about the collection aspect of it. Uh, in terms of redistribution of wealth, uh, okay, that's... So, but so, why collect more from some people than you do from others? Well, you decide if you want to pay tax. That's the beauty of the, the fair tax, is that you decide when to pay taxes. When? When you purchase something. If you don't want to pay taxes, essentially, then you do not need to purchase. But in effect, and therefore saying, you retain but, your power okay, over the decide whether or not. You're, but, in effect, you're saying though that a rich guy has got to pay more for his merchandise than a poor guy does. Well, a rich guy, system, will, a correct? rich guy, no. The the there will be one rate. The progressivity comes into effect because we are exempting essentially the the first, in my example, the first twenty thousand dollars worth of uh, uh, purchases. Okay, and then thereafter the progressivity will come into effect. Okay, well, that, that that's really no more than Milton Friedman's negative income tax just applied over on the sales tax side. And I think there's an awful lot to be said for that as a substitute for welfare. But how would you go about collecting a tax of this sort? That's the, thank you. Uh, what I'm proposing is not anything really new. We already have it at the local and at the state level. We're all accustomed and know how to pay sales taxes. We do it every day when we purchase a cup of coffee, a shirt, uh, a luxury item, a car, etc. So therefore we would make use of the uh, uh, the current infrastructure and what we would do is this. At the cash register the business would collect a tax for the federal government and then thereafter the state would uh, as they currently do, be responsible for collecting it from the business. Now, what we would do for that minimal amount of work that they would have to do at the end of the month uh, is compensate them. I believe it's a half a percent of what they collect, and we would also compensate the state uh, in order for their collection. So then you would the you would originally tax everybody at the top rate, and then re rebate at the end of the year, say progressively to. Um, people of lower and lower incomes, is well, that what, the idea? What happens is we do not discriminate as the current income tax system does, okay? We don't look at groups differently, okay? We are going to tax all goods and services new, new goods and services at one rate, up until the poverty level, okay? Multiply by the federal sales tax, in our example, 2,000. Divide 2,000, for example, uh, by 12 months, and on a monthly basis, everybody would receive a rebate, effectively untaxing their purchases up until the poverty level. But mathematically, that just reduces to a flat sales tax across the board and a democratic, demographic grant of so many dollars to each individual. That, that, that's mathematically where you finish up, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, again, it's the kind of thing that Milton Friedman uh, went for when he was proposing the negative income tax. But the, when, when you say it would be strictly a, uh, a federal proposal, I, th I think you're missing one of the advantages, if I may say so, of your, uh, of your own scheme, which is that you can levy a single tax, you can allow the states to piggyback on it, you can, evade, you can avoid certain problems such as purchase of uh, goods out of state which are shipped back in and sometimes the sales tax is collected, sometimes it isn't. You could very easily say we're going to levy a federal tax plus a state tax plus conceivably even the city tax okay. by zip code. But in general you, you don't favor that sort of taxation, you favor an income tax. Well, no, no, what, 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 I, what I do favor, again, 
uh, I, get, I get to be a bore on this, but simplicity is my mantra. And if something is happening, which will say we will have a um, collect part of our federal tax the same way that we collect our state tax, we will get incidental advantages such as solving the problem of out-of-state purchases. We could very easily have legislation that said if goods are bought out of state for delivery here, we levy a federal tax rate, half the state tax at the place it's sold, half the state tax where it's delivered. That, that would well, be relatively easy well, to we do. We can argue till King and come about uh, whether one type of taxation is superior morally or um, otherwise to any other form of tax, whether it be morally or whether it's a more efficient system or whether it well, raises okay, more revenue okay. or whatever. Okay. But my question is, why aren't you gentlemen, either of you, talking about reducing taxation, well, well, perhaps let's, even let's, eliminating it? Well, I'll, let, I'll let, tell you let, how let, we arrived at our rate. Our rate, which is uh, in, in our bill, uh, and let me just address what you stated before. What I talk about is at the federal level. I can't get into the states because our bill uh, and what we are pushing for is only at the federal level. That being stated, if we uh, arrive and we achieve our goal, uh, you would think that the state and also the states would do away with income tax because also, a lot of their information is based well, on what happens at the federal level. So can, you, would think, I, so you, would, you would think that that would follow. That would be the domino effect on Can this. I get in just a small uh, in interruption? It seems to me that it, as a practical matter, this is not the kind of thing that you want to do at the federal level and hope that eventually the states will fall in line. It's something that you need to have planned out with the states before you really get into it seriously. Well, and, but, and, and that, that's a good point. And the tax reform panel, the commission that was that was set up by President Bush, commissioned by President Bush, uh, in one of their meetings, uh, they had actually reached out to the states and to understand the federal income tax code and the impact on states. Mm -hmm. And so they are reaching out but, for that. But what I'm stating is where we talk is at the federal level. But let's, so. let's go back a minute just to the, the concept of having this thing be revenue neutral. I'd like to answer some of, some of what uh, Joe just said. I would think that what you're proposing would make sense, not as a substitute for the individual income tax, <coughs> excuse me, but as a substitute for the corporate tax. And there's one big advantage that I don't hear from the proponents that I think we should. And that is a, either a VAT tax or a retail sales tax has a tremendous advantage to a company which is exporting. Okay, well, let me, right. uh, uh, let me can, get can back to that. that? Yes, can I address that in no, just let, a moment? Let, let me finish we'll, the point, We'll get back to important. it in just a moment. We can get back to it in a moment, but first I want to break in here um, f to uh, give our audience just a little idea of where each of you is uh, coming from, politically speaking. Now, this is a libertarian show. you got a libertarian host, which is me. Um, Mr. Jones, you are not exactly a libertarian, are you? How would you classify yourself? I'm, I'm not a libertarian <clears throat> because I, I think that one of the functions of taxation and government... Well, I'm, not, gov ask, I'm gov not asking you to explain your position. Just tell me, are you a, a Democrat, a socialist, a uh, prohibitionist, a uh, liberal conservative? Uh, How would you call yourself? I think if I had to describe myself, I'm conservative in the sense that I strongly disapprove of what's going on now, which is to run colossal deficits, borrow them from China and Japan, and dump the bill on my children and grandchildren. I don't think that should be done. I would like to pay that bill myself, even if my taxes go up. Okay, Mr. So I'm, just one more thing, that, which makes me, I think, a conservative in the, in, the, in, in the same sense that Bill Clinton and Howard Dean are conservatives. Okay, uh, you finally... You, you like that one? Uh, um, okay, you're a Democrat. <laughs> uh, Mr. Yomtov, uh, same question to you. Yeah, I'm a registered Republican. Okay, and um, are you um, a Republican in, um, in your heart as well as on the registration paper? Um, at, at times, obviously, there, there might be conflicts, you uh, know, where I mean, we're running deficits. For example, I'm a registered you... Democrat, but I'm a dyed-in-the-wool libertarian. Uh, you are not, however, a libertarian. Uh, I, I'm sure that there's there's some components of each, a libertarian, Democrat, and also Republican, uh -huh. uh, that, that I would embrace. I'm a registered Republican. Okay. Uh, Very I'd, good. So I'd rather concentrate a, on, on the topic at hand. Jolly good. we okay. got a Democrat, a Republican, <laughs> and a libertarian. I can't speak for the other two parties, but if you want to know more about the libertarian party, I would invite you to visit 
the website of the Manhattan chapter of the Libertarian Party. That is www.manhattanlp.org. And if you'd like to send us an email to request further information about libertarianism or about any of our upcoming um, parties, functions, orgies, whatever you want, might want to call them, then you can send the email to info at manhattanlp.org. And we welcome all and sundry. We are trying to increase our membership. Lord knows we could use some new blood. We always could. Um, but now back to the fray. You were talking about um, the application of um, national sales tax to the uh, corporate as opposed to the personal world, were you not? Yes, and there, and there are two reasons why I think that this proposal should be a substitute or at least a partial substitute for the corporate tax. And that's that the corporate tax is something that's levied on the corporations, is passed through in the product and is paid for in more or less the same way by the consumer. And therefore, the difference between that and retail sales tax is not that significant. It, it's not removing an element of progress, progressive progressivity. It's, moving, it's removing a huge element. You got uh, uh, all those t time and resources that are dedicated to generating uh, a corporate income tax and as you stated eloquently uh, is who pays it, the consumer. In reality the only entity that pays taxes are the consumers. They're the last in line to receive the good or service that's being produced. That being stated, and you stated it before with respect to a VAT, you stated that specifically, if that is the case then the only argument uh, is for a sales tax. If the only people pay taxes are consumers, then why not only tax at that one point? Because all you're doing is increasing the price uh, of the final good or service you're increasing by the cost, by the expense of doing but, business, but that's time, not... energy, all this being generated to create paperwork, no, to that, create that, paperwork that, and be a bookkeeper for the United States government. That's not a progressive argument, though. That's an argument that the... That's why retail, I like it, the retail sales tax may be more efficient than the corporate in income tax. Now, I'm not sure about that. I, I don't really know. Well, now, uh, would the uh, national retail sales tax completely um, replace yes, an income tax? Yes, in we, we, you have two things here. You have our bill, H.R. 25, and the sister legislation in the Senate, S. 25, that instill a, the fair tax, uh, uh, a national retail sales tax, progressive revenue neutral, and you have H.J. 16. Uh, House Joint Resolution, House um, uh, H.A. 16, which uh, uh, abolishes the 16th Amendment. So we, under no circumstances, want a s federal sales tax on top of our current system. Uh -huh. We, it, we so want it to replace it completely. Once again, re if I haven't said it, to replace personal and corporate income taxes, estate taxes, gift taxes, capital gains taxes, your payroll taxes, okay, all to be replaced by a progressive retail sales tax. That's revenue but, neutral. Okay, well, but, I, but I, but I still, not really I'll get to you in a moment, Mr. Jones, but uh, I just want to point out that I loathe the word progressive, whether it applies to uh, political policy or to taxation. I think it's a, a pernicious word. But, it's uh, progressive but in my the God, sense that the uh, more you spend, the more you're going to pay. Yes, quite. Uh, yeah, it, sounds to me like your, it sounds to me like your idea is at least slightly less progressive than the... Uh, the evil income tax that uh, Mr. Jones supports, but uh, but you want taxation to be more progressive. Can you explain to me why that is? Yeah, I support the idea that the very wealthiest should should have a surcharge, should pay at a higher rate. You're going to find them for being wealthy. Than the, than the, no, I'm going to participate in the wealth that they generate because <laughs> one of the reasons. One of the reasons that they generate wealth is what society has handed to them on a plate. So you're in and, favor and, of the estate should, tax? And, and yes. And, and, and what, what's handed to them on a plate is everything from cooking with fire all the way through to the Internet. Those are all things that you acquire when you're born and you come into the society. That's why and people accumulate property to pass it along to their children. And, and, and the government comes along and robs the corpse. How is that just? No, I, I, I'm, I'm Taxing all in, on death. I'm, I'm all in favor of passing along a good deal of what you earn as a result of, to some extent, of what society has given to you. But not necessarily all of it. I think if you... <clears throat> if you believe in the income tax, as I do, 
The idea is that a portion of that income should be used in doing useful things like police and fire and road, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can yeah, but now you're getting into forever. where it's being spent. I'm talking about right. where it's collected. Well, so, Joe's question was, should we have it in the first place? And my answer exactly is yes, so. because there are a lot of very useful things that we do with it. Now, I don't love taxes. My, my taxes are too high, just like everybody else's. Uh -huh. but, but I need the fire, and I need the roads, and I need the police. Well, the libertarian mm -hmm. argument would be that um, many of uh, the government's so-called services that are paid for with the income tax could be phased out and dismantled. I'm not one of these wackos who thinks that we can eliminate taxation overnight. No, I think it would have to be phased out very, very slowly. But I don't see why we have to collect so much money from unwilling citizens for programs that they never approved of. Well, if, no. that, the, if the, that's the, what you like, okay, then you should be 100% in support of this because what I am offering to you and to any individual is, or what I want to do is empower the individual. We hear the word responsibility echoed a lot nowadays. You can't take responsibility for yourself if you don't have the means by which to do it. And what is that means? Your paycheck, your money. And when the government comes in and they take 30, 40, 50, and even on your, on your deathbed, they take say, almost up to 60%. You are, you are not empowered. You can't take responsibility for yourself. What a sales tax does, it, it allows you, one aspect of it, if you do not like, for example, what the government is doing, you don't feel confident in what the government is doing, okay, then you will not purchase something. The size of government will be reflective of the confidence of the individuals and the, the environment in which the, I guess, the government to some extent has created. So I've just, I've just answered so your question. So you can reduce wanna... your tax bill by <coughs> placing yourself on a personal austerity program. You can't do that with an income tax. No, they come you? in. They're the first ones um, to take your hard work each and each, every week. They take it before you see it. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was to put my hand in your pocket right now, we're walking on the street, I take my hand, put it in your pocket. I'd wrench it off and beat you to death with it, sir. Yeah, so why do you allow the federal government to come in each and every week and take money well, out I of your Well, I don't allow paycheck? it willingly, I'll tell you <laughs> that. Well, now, Mr. There, Jones, there, maybe there. you can explain to us uh, how, it, how a person could reduce his taxes by just uh, using ordinary austerity measures or something, if he doesn't like to pay taxes, um, why should he be penalized well, for I uh, I saving I money? Well, I believe taxes should be brought as low as possible, and we do it by as much efficiency as, pro as possible and as much simplicity as, as, as possible. And the, the thing I campaign against is complexity. And you've heard me on one of these earlier shows when I was sitting here with three other small businessmen. And I'm, I made this point, and they, they didn't break into applause, but they didn't contradict the notion that our main problem is complexity and not the volume okay. of our well, taxes. I, I would disagree. I would put up with a little complexity gladly, gladly if it would uh, significantly reduce my tax bill. Well, the thing here is that it's, it's interesting because I'm, 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 I guess... Uh, to some extent agreeing more with the gentleman here because we're staying on the topic of collection. So uh, with respect to the rate that's determined uh, by Congress, the amount that they are spending, what we need to be as individuals, if we do not like what the government is doing, we need to be vigilant and talk to them and tell them, well, maybe you shouldn't be doing this, you maybe shouldn't be doing this. But with respect to collecting the taxation, you're echoing, echoing the words of Federal Reserve uh, Chairman Alan Greenspan, where he stated in, I believe it was the third tax reform panel commission meeting held in uh, Washington, D.C., where he stated a simpler tax code would reduce the considerable resources devoted to complying with the current tax laws, and the freed up resources could be used for more productive purposes, thus greater okay. simplicity would in and of itself Ab absolutely. engender well, no, 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 What no would argument. your simplified system look like? <clears throat> it would be somewhat like the flat tax proposal, but my objection to the present flat tax income tax proposal is it's not flat. It doesn't have the feature that was just described that you rebate at the bottom end, essentially it reduces to a flat demographic grant per head and then a flat tax thereafter. And I think that will work up until a fairly high level. But the problem with the substituting a sales tax is that when you get to the very high levels, you do not have the opportunity to levy a surcharge. Well, Mr. Jones, it sounds like your system of taxation is not so much about raising revenue 
as it is about um, leveling the uh, leveling the uh, income levels in this country. Am I no, right about no, that? No, it, no, it's, it's not punishing success. If it were punishing success, then all the CEOs out there who are, who are earning six, seven figures, figure sa high, high six and seven figure salaries. A uh, six figure would, salary is not that much anymore, not even No, no, I know, <laughs> I, I know, that, 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 that's why I slid quickly into seven. Mm -hmm. All right, let's just talk about seven figure salaries. The guy who is not right now earning a seven figure salary is not, to my mind, refusing to work. He's, he's not taking off a lot of time and saying, I can't be bothered. It's just not worth it. The government is taking 32 percent, and they only ought to take 27 percent, and therefore I'm going to put my feet up and I'm not going to work. That, that's an illusion. It doesn't happen. No, it doesn't happen. I grant you that, but uh, that's, that still doesn't deal with the moral question of why should you take 32 percent from that guy <coughs> when you're taking um, 15 percent from somebody else, and would that the figures let, were really that low? The, an, the, an, the answer is very simple, because he can afford it. That's not quite a good argument from a libertarian point of view. That's like saying, well, I'm going to charge you $3 a pound for hamburger, but you're richer, so I'm going to charge you $6 a that's pound for hamburger. That's discrimination, so. and, and that's what it is in the current thing. Let me, let me just uh, state something else the Federal uh, Reserve Chairman has stated uh, in his, and I'm reading uh, verbatim um, his words uh, from that tax panel meeting. As you know, many economists believe that a consumption tax would be best from the perspective of, prom of promoting economic growth because a consumption tax is likely to encourage savings and capital formation. Okay, See, well, at the on end that of the note, we're going to have to wrap it up, I'm afraid, because uh, we are coming to the end of the program. But I want to thank you both for appearing on this show and for almost creating the impression that taxation is not in and of itself evil. But um, you didn't convince me, I'm afraid. But thank you both anyway for coming on the show. Adam Yamtov and Brian Jones, I hope to see you both again on a future show. And for now, that's all. I'm Joseph Dobrian, and this has been Hardfire. Tune in next week. Yeah, I support the idea that the very wealthiest should, should have a surcharge, should pay at a higher rate. You're going to find them for being wealthy? Than the, than the, no, I'm going to participate in the wealth that they generate because it, one of the reasons... One of the reasons that they generate wealth is what society has handed to them on a plate. So you're in and, favor and, of the estate and, tax? And, and, yes. And, and, and what, what's handed to them on a plate is everything from cooking with fire all the way through to the Internet. Those are all things that you acquire when you're born and you come into the society. That's why and people seems, accumulate property to pass and, it along to their children. And, and, and the government comes along and robs the corpse. How is that just?